Larissa Schneiderman, and the aspects or parts of my delivery I plan to work on today are using more gestures, working on maintaining my posture, and reduce my swaying. Have you ever loved something so much that you just couldn't get enough of it? Victoria and Elizabeth can are sisters and also the authors of Pinkalicious, and they tell a story about what can happen when you just can't get enough. Too much of a good thing can often turn into a sour experience. You need to be satisfied with what you get and not constantly ask for more. Pinkalicious is the story of a little girl who just doesn't know when she's had enough and through a series of escapades learns a very important lesson that too much of a good thing isn't so good after all. Pinkalicious. It was a rainy day. Too wet to go outside. Mommy said, let's make some cupcakes. What color would you like? Pink, I said. Pink, pink, pink. Mommy put in some pink. More, I cried. More, more, more. I gobbled up a couple of the cupcakes while Mommy and I frosted them. They were so yummy. In fact, they were pinkalicious. I offered one to Peter, my little brother. He's very picky about what he eats and didn't want it. So I ate it. Please, Mommy, can I have just one more cupcake? I begged when I got up from my nap. You get what you get, and you don't get upset, she said. But I got very upset. After dinner, I ate more and more cupcakes and refused to go to bed. Just one more pink cupcake, then I'll go to sleep. Daddy waved his finger at me. You have had enough. The next morning when I woke up, I was pink. My face was pink. My hands were pink. My belly was the color of a sunset. Daddy thought I'd played with markers on my skin, so he gave me a bath, but the pink didn't come off. My hair was the color of raspberry. I cried because I was so beautiful. I even had pink tears. I put on my pink fairy princess dress and twirled in front of the mirror while well, mommy dialed the pediatrician. I'm Pinkerbell, look at me, I'm Pinkerbell, I sang. Mommy hurried and grabbed her first. Just one more pink cupcake, just one more, I asked on our way to the doctor's office. Dr. Wink took a look at me and said, you have a very rare and acute case of pinkatitis. I guess that's not the worst thing that could happen. Call me Pinkarella. Then Dr. Wink said, for the next week, no more pink cupcakes, pink bubblegum, or pink cotton candy. To return to normal, you must eat a steady diet of green foods. Ugh. On the way home, we stopped at the playground my friend Allison was there, but she didn't see me. When I waved to her, a bee landed on my nose. Ugh, get off, I scolded him. I am not a flower. Soon, I was surrounded by bees, butterflies, and birds. Mommy, I cried, I want to go home now. When we left the playground, I asked Mommy if I could have just one more pink cupcake. Don't you remember what the doctor said? No more pink cupcakes. Peter tugged at my pink tails. I wish I were pink like you, he said. He was green with envy. That night, I pretended to eat my dinner of green, mushy vegetables. After everyone went to sleep, I snuck into the kitchen, climbed onto a chair, reached on my tippy toes to the top of the fridge where mommy had hidden the cupcakes. I got one. I ate it, and then I licked the wrapper clean. When I woke up in the morning, I felt different. I ran to the mirror and looked at myself. I was a deeper pink than I'd ever seen. In fact, I wasn't pink at all. I was red. Oh no, not red, I screamed. I did not want to be red. I should not have eaten that last cupcake. I just wanted to be myself again, and I knew what I had to do. I opened the fridge, held my nose, and squeezed on a 
a yicky bottle of green relish onto my tongue. I eat pickles, spinach, olives, and okra. I choked down artichokes, gagged on grapes, and burped up Brussels sprouts. Next thing I knew, my arms tickled, my ears tingled, and my feet started to twitch. I was no longer red. I was no longer pink. I was just me, and I was beautiful. So what happened to the rest of the cupcakes, Pinkalicious, Daddy asked. Just then, Peter ran into the room and yelled, Pinkaboo! Victoria and Elizabeth, I think, send a very important message to children not to get wrapped up in what you want and that having too much of something never turns out good. And on top of that, you also influence others just as Pinkalicious did to her brother. And I just think it's important to be grateful what you have because if you keep going for it, it can turn in a very different direction than you anticipated. I hope you all enjoyed Pinkalicious and thank you.